Were one-handed swords ever used in two hands? Hi, I'm Nick Thomas at the Academy of Historical Fencing. I'm bringing this video on, yes, were one-handed swords ever wielded in two hands? So we know that small two-handed swords did in fact get used in one hand uh, for certain reasons and in certain time periods, whether we're talking about things like the Japanese katana or a small European longsword that we might also call a bastard sword or a hand and a half sword, depending on the uh, country you're uh, coming from and, and also the time period that we're talking about. But yeah, small long sword or small two-handed swords, basically. So we know that there were times when these both were used in one hand. So the question is now is, were swords that were intentionally built as a one-handed sword ever used in two hands? And before we get started on this video, I'd like to point out that I'm specifically talking about using two hands on the grip and not a half sword in method where one hand is on the blade and one hand is on the grip because we know this was done both with long swords and some one-handed swords as well so we're not talking about that in this video we are specifically talking about two hands on the grip of a one-handed sword so it's really common in the movies to see characters basically cup one hand over the other especially with you know your traditional medieval one-handed sword but also with a whole range of things ranging through to sabers and sometimes even rapiers in the movies so yeah when you watch movie fight scenes with with european one-handed swords of pretty much any time period whether it's you know viking and saxon stuff range it all the way up to the 19th century and even to the 20th just about you're pretty much always going to see somebody cupping basically their their off hand their left hand if they're a right-hander over the other uh, and basically embracing the sword with two hands like this so what we're going to ask in this video is how realistic is that was it actually done because it's one of those tropes that always comes up in in uh, action movies where the swords are involved so we're going to have a look at how authentic that really is because ultimately, if you watch something like Richard Sharp in the Sharp movies or TV series, um, he does it all the time. So this is the Sword of Sharp. Uh, this is an original 1796 Troopers heavy cavalry sword. It is the sword that Sharp uses throughout. And he, you know, half the time he's fighting with the sword, it seems, he's, he's basically putting the other hand up there to just swing this big heavy sword. So why is it being done in the movies? Well you could argue that it's being done for effect because in movies you want to have a certain amount of cause and effects to make it believable so unlike say the sort of tippy tappy almost dance level of fights that you used to see with say errol flynn it's more popular these days to see a more cause and effect so the weapons seem heavier the impacts seem harder it's harder to defend so it's less of a dance and more a savage battle basically and in that regard it makes a lot of sense to throw the extra hand on there to really give some impacts to the fight so it looks more dramatic more theatrical you know, there's more cause and effect but stepping away from the movies and now looking at basically historical sources was it done and if so why would it be done so in the movies it's usually about getting more power into the blow um, or sometimes defending against a really heavy impact like in say this scene in Prince of Thieves um, and sometimes because the fighter is exhausted or wounded so for example in the final Rob Roy fight where he's just getting slashed to pieces and it's just basically weak so he takes up his broadsword in two hands and also if you look at the duelists, uh, the, their sabre fight. So they have one sabre fight, which is typical, you know, sabre in, in one hand and they're actually in good sort of fencing guard positions as you would be using a sabre like this, because this is basically the sabre they were using. And actually that fight is quite, you know, quite authentic. And then you go to their second sabre fight, which is just a, basically a grunting brawl as they get hacked to pieces and they're, they're staggering all over the place, sweaty and bloody. And they start using the sword in two hands because they're absolutely exhausted and wounded. So yeah, those are the reasons that usually a sword is used in two hands in the movies. It's to do with power of the blow, strength of the defense, and, and then so often um, aggression and also injury or fatigue. So those are the reasons that it's done in the movies. Now let's look back at its history and see was it done at all. So if you're talking about say military swords like like this sort of Napoleonic era swords that I'm talking about with say the duelists and with Sharp, no it's not actually you know in the manuals 
as such. And it wouldn't make any sense because these swords, as much as they portray them as being really, really heavy in the movies, particularly this, the, this is known, the heavy cavalry trooper sword is known to be a massively heavy brutish sword. And yet I am showing you a, um, an original antique here and you can see that actually it's not. It, it is a reasonably heavy sword. It's, it's just over one kilo. So, you know, a whisker over 2.2 pounds. So it is reasonably heavy, but it's not that heavy. I mean, you know, this, this medieval sort of one arm, one handed arming sword is, is about the same weight. The Viking sword that I was showing from Albion Swords is actually slightly heavier. So in actual fact, these what look like big heavy swords of the 18th and, uh, and early 19th century aren't half as heavy as they look, but ultimately when fatigue kicks in and when you are injured, I mean, we can't exactly simulate being stabbed or cut in the arm, but you know that it's going to weaken you and we know what fatigue does. Are you going to start basically cupping that extra hand on there for a bit of strength? Well, I suspect it might actually happen occasionally because yes, if you do get that much fatigue and if you are that injured, then perhaps, but I would say it's pretty unlikely. And yet, if we step back a little bit earlier, and we look to say the Viking sword uh, and the Armin sword, so if we look at the uh, Icelandic sagas, or the Viking sagas, which are some of the best, or some of the only actual references we've got for basically Viking culture, and they actually describe the sword being used in two hands on multiple occasions. And they don't exactly say how, but you know, and I, people do argue about how that could potentially be done, but I would say, what they're saying is to cut the hand over like this. And if we move up to medieval sources in medieval artwork, we have got references to show this exact thing being done in multiple paintings, multiple artwork. And so it's written about, it's painted, and therefore they were doing it. Now, why would they be doing it? Well, in the Viking sagas, they talk about um, actually smashing through shields and, um, and sometimes angry and aggressive fighters are, are described as using their sword in two hands. So perhaps there it's not so much down to fatigue or, or injury, but actually to do with power and aggression and also anger. Uh, and actually that is exactly the way it's so often used in the movies. So is there something to this? Well, yeah, realistically there was. Uh, and it does get a little bit of extra power. And in terms of the human psyche, in terms of aggression and anger and fury, it feeds into all those things. It just sl smashing your opponent down. And so yeah, it was written about and it was depicted. So yeah, it was done, um, probably not anything like as often as it was done in the movies. And yet, if we then go to one account that I found um, in the 19th century in Italy, where uh, a guy's out um, going hunting and he's just got his little hunting hanger and, uh, and, a, and a musket, a rifle, and uh, he gets attacked by a load of gendarmes who are, are basically a paramilitary force. So um, somewhere across between military and police and he gets attacked by a load of them. And it's specifically described in this account that one of them attacks him with his sword in two hands. And it's described in that it's very, very much a kind of a furious, angry blow. So yet again, it's exactly the way that we see it done in the movies. And, and therefore, yes, it was actually being done. And, and so to sum this up, no, these basically cupping basically a, a second hand onto a one-handed sword was not depicted in the fighting manuals um, that we actually study from. It clearly wasn't the norm. And yet there are depictions, there are accounts across hundreds of years of it actually happening. And therefore it is kind of funny enough, a bit legitimate. So when you're watching those movies and they, they rein in those monstrous blows in two hands with a one-handed sword, there is something to that. And when they use that second hand as, as basically a defensive measure, so to basically brace the sword, um, that, there's possibly something to that as well. And so ultimately, yeah, the movies actually, as much as they, they're not doing it for realism, they're doing it for, for a basically dramatic effect, we know historically speaking, it did actually happen. And so yes, putting that second hand on there is a thing, um, but it probably, well, I would say definitely wasn't needed for some of the ways that you see it. So if you're watching Sharp, for example, it's done just to knock aside muskets and stuff like that. And uh, if anybody's ever trained with a, a saber against a musket, you'll know the last thing that you want to do is to put a second hand on there because although you, you know, you're dealing with a fair bit of mass to have to parry, 
actually against a musket the thing you need is dexterity and agility is you need to basically get the blade quickly to wherever the bayonet is because they're coming in with thrusts and disengages and stuff like that so you don't need huge force to beat a bayonet out of the way you just need to get the sword in the correct place and so having the second hand on there is just just not at all really a, a thing so so yeah uh in fact when the second hand goes onto the grip in movies there is something to that it's it's a bit overused for dramatic effect, but there definitely is something to it in the historical texts, in the artwork, in sources, in first-hand accounts. It is a thing, it just probably wasn't anything like as common as they do it in the movies for flash and flair. So um, thanks for watching, I do hope you enjoy the video, and if you haven't subscribed, please do so.